Hello guys, welcome back to another video. Today I'm gonna explain the answers for the questions. We're gonna focus on the competency one, lesson two questions. And I'm gonna teach you how we need to approach questions with the existing knowledge. Let's go ahead and look at the first question. When we try to solve these questions, we may need to highlight some of the keywords in the passage. Let's take a look at them. Some of them are middle school years and sense of autonomy, which is basically a feeling of having choices. In order to increase sense of autonomy for middle school students, we need to provide students with options so that they can make choices. Let's go ahead and look at the answer choices. A. Designing activities and assignments to permit student choice among a range of options. This is the key vocabulary student choice among a range of options uh, let's get b using democratic processes to make decisions affecting the whole class where to go on a field trip c routinely including blocks of unstructured time in students daily schedules b and c has nothing to do with the questions we don't need to look at that. D, assigning grades. Oh, grades, if we're talking about grades during PPR tests, like that's not supposed to be an answer, mostly. Assigning grades based primarily on students' self-evaluations of their performance. But let's explain why D is not the answer. D also seems to be a good answer but we can't use self-evaluation as grades against students so the correct answer is a question number two teaching team in a middle school class is planning assignments this is middle school class is planning an assignment in which students will spend several weeks examining the costs and benefits of various human activities. Examples of topics studied by students in the past include dirt biking in the wilderness areas, the use of pesticides on crops, and watching television. The teachers will help students identify an activity they are interested in. They are interested in. Develop an appropriate plan for collecting information and Decide what type of presentation to make to the class at the end of the project. The requirement to examine both the costs and benefits of a particular activity is a valuable exercise for middle school students primarily because it a eliminates the misconception that there is always one ideal solution to any problem. B promotes students' growing capacity to consider a topic from more than one point of view. C. Ensures that students' final conclusions will be based on a reason rather than an opinion. D. Requires students to generate ideas on their own rather than simply making use of received information. One of the key words is teaching team. A teaching team which is where two teachers from the same subjects work together collaboratively to teach students. This question seeks for an answer about why examining both the costs and benefits of a particular activity is important for middle school students. This is also related to Piaget's human development stages. Basically, examining both the costs and benefits of something will make people gain different point of view skills. So, answer B looks closer to what we need. By the way, if we see comparisons in the answers, such as more than, rather than, etc., answer choices are not generally correct. Number three, Joshua is a three-year-old boy who often chooses to play in the block corner during free play time. For several weeks, Joshua's block constructions have consisted primarily of repetitive rows made by placing the blocks end-to-end -end horizontally or by stacking them vertically. Based on this information, the best assessment of Joshua's play with the blocks is that he is a 
too limited in his approach and needs to be stimulated to explore other types of block construction. B. Passing through a predictable stage in his exploration of the block medium. C. Exhibiting signs of cognitive delay and should be tested for possible cognitive deficits. D. Showing the effects of a home environment in which materials other than blocks are used to provide cognitive stimulation. Let's try to find the correct answer in this question. We have three year old child who is in the pre-operational stage. Uh, this is the key vocabulary for this um, age. Pre-operational stage, playing with the blocks. The question is about what we can infer from Joshua's play with the blocks. Apparently, Joshua is going through a stage along with the characteristics of it. So these playing with the blocks both horizontally and vertically are meant to happen at that stage. As we look through the answer choices, the best one is B because other ones are negative sounding about child's development. Answer choice B is pre-operational stage. Question number four. A preschooler has a pitcher of milk. After pouring milk from the pitcher into three cups, the preschooler announces that she now has more milk. The teacher's best assessment of this incident would be that the student A appears to be showing signs of a developmental delay, B has not grasped the concept of conservation of volume, C appears to be showing signs of a visual disability, D has not developed the concept of object permanence. Let's try to find the correct answer. In this question, we have a preschooler who is apparently in the pre-operational stage pouring milk into three cups from a pitcher, which is mainly about the laws of conservation. Our correct answer should be about this. Answer A is not correct. Because if a student was a high schooler, then this would be developmental delay. Answer C and D have nothing to do with this correct answer. The correct answer is B. Question number five. The students in an eighth grade class represent a wide range of levels of cognitive development. From concrete operational to formal operational thought, the teacher's best strategy for adapting instructions to accommodate this degree of cognitive variation among students would be to a make use of experiential and hands-on activities to complement and illustrate more abstract content b group students as much as possible according to the level of cognitive development c plan to work with students one-on-one -on -one to the greatest extent possible d target instructions at the average level of cognitive development represented by the class overall. Let's try to answer the question. In this question, we have a wide range of students in 8th grade class from both concrete operational and formal operational thought. What is concrete operational? What is concrete operational? It implies hands-on activities and experiments. How about what is operational thought? It implies abstract stuff, scientific thinking. We have to address both types of students at the same time in the class. When we glance through the answers, the best one in the light of existing knowledge is A. Question number six. A high school junior tells a teacher that he intends to drop out of school because school is a waste of time and a full-time job would enable him to earn a lot of money. The teacher is most likely to be able to discuss this issue effectively with the student if the teacher is aware that many students at this age a. focus on the present and have trouble appreciating long-term consequences b are not yet able to recognize and distinguish the diverse roles of individuals and groups in society. C. Find it difficult to apply reasoning skills to any issues that are affecting their own lives. D. Weave the authority figures 
in their lives, including teachers, as being able to make the best decisions. Let's try to answer the question. We have a scenario about a student who intends to drop out of school, and the question focuses on one very common and general attribute of high school junior students. What needs to be done to effectively discuss with the with them about this issue? Answer A is the right answer because those students at that age want to get things easily without any effort and thinking about their consequences. The answer choice is obviously A. Question number seven. According to Piaget's stages of cognitive development, which of the following thought processes best distinguishes a student at the formal operational stage? A. Abstract thought. B. Logical thought. C. Concrete thought. D. Intuitive thought. This question is all about knowing the Piaget stages of cognitive development. Abstract thought develops at the formal operational stage. Logical thought starts developing at the pre-operational stage. So the right answer is A. Question number eight. Daniel is a four-year-old who prefers to play by herself and is not comfortable interacting with other children. To best facilitate Daniel's transition into the next stage of play development, the teacher should provide a variety of a. individual activities and materials that children can do side by side b. small group and child directed activities c. play, props and cooperative activities d. interesting and age appropriate individual activities Let's try to find the correct answer for this question. We have a child in this question who prefers to play by herself. In order to best facilitate this child's transition into the next stage of play development, we have to enable students to play side by side. So when we look at the answers, the right answer is A. Side by side. Question number 9. Miss Nguyen notices that a boy in her kindergarten class comes to school very irritable and is hyperactive most of the day. He has trouble concentrating and frequently fights with other children. Which of the following actions would be the most appropriate first response to this situation? A. Referring the child to the school nurse for possible attention deficit hyperactivity disorder symptoms. B. Monitoring and documenting the behavior to be used at the parent-teacher conference in a few months. C. Setting up a conference with child's parents and discuss behavior at home and sleep schedules. D. Collaborating with an administrator to develop an intervention plan to address behavior. Let's try to find an answer for this question. A is not the correct answer because the nurse is not right person to diagnose students for possible attention disorder. That's not the answer. B shows us the long-term process so it's not correct we need short-term process c could be right answer but we're looking for the first best response d also could be right answer but the teacher has to find the first immediate response to that so the answer is c let's use red to show the correct answer Question number 10. Ms. Ramirez is a 5th grade teacher planning a unit on the environment. The students will work collaboratively to conduct internet research that will culminate in a group computer-based slide show persuading community members to participate in helping to protect, um, protect the environment. When constructing her lesson plans for the unit, Ms. Ramirez anticipates potential challenges that may arise while students are conducting their research. She decides to conduct several mini lessons before students begin their research. Mini lesson 1. How to distinguish relevant from irrelevant information. Mini lesson 2. How to refrain from plagiarism. Mini lesson 3. How to keep their research organized. To most effectively facilitate the student's understanding of the third mini-lesson, 
Ms. Ramirez should A, allow students computer access to record topic ideas and develop an outline, B, require students to keep a journal to reflect on their progress, C, allow the librarian to demonstrate how books and journals are organized, D, require students to search for images that correspond to their ideas. Let's go ahead and try to find the correct answer for this question. The question is primarily about facilitating students' understanding of the third mini lesson, which is about organizational skill. Organizational skill. Basically, developing an outline shows us how things need to be done and organized accordingly.